So, so we're told at the end of the Bible that uh, essentially the revelation of God to humankind is complete. We're told that you've been given these books and do not add to them and do not take away from them. Uh, this is actually a historic warning that goes with all of God's revelations to the human race. Right back in Torah, it was said, you know, do not add to the commandments, do not take away from the commandments. Now, this, of course, raises the issue of new traditions. And what is the status of new traditions? Uh, and this question comes up in a number of very different ways. You have in certain um, Gnostic or alternative or fringe groups of in the, in the history of Christianity, extra texts which assumed a certain authority, um, which the the most of Christianity rejected. Something like the Gospel of Thomas, um, the Gospel the, the Gospel of Judas, things like this. Now. The, these texts um, were very important to those who, who wrote and preserved them and considered them, probably considered them sacred in some way. Um, and it, you could view them as adding to scripture. Um, now, other religious groups do this in a, in a different way. Christianity and Judaism, different Christianities and Judaism do this in a different way. Church traditions, bodies of doctrine, um, ideas which are clearly based on scripture get written down. Um, certain traditions of how to observe certain rituals get written down. Liturgies get written down. And this raises questions of, well, how authoritative are they? How do they relate to the canon of the Bible? In Judaism, you have the ordering of the various commandments and then practical details given of how to keep them. The, the impetus for this is very, very important to understand. Otherwise, you end up accusing the whole of rabbinic Judaism of coming under a curse of adding to the Bible. But think about the nature of Torah. Torah is not great on detail. Torah says, for example, uh, when you harvest your field, Leave the corner of your field for the needy to be able to come and take for themselves. Don't harvest every single part of your field. Well, how big is the corner of your field? What if your field has three corners or five corners? Does it, you know, do you then change the amount you leave? What if your field has no corners at all? What if it's circular? Are you excused keeping this part of Torah? Or more to the point, what if you don't own a field anymore? <laughs> You're not a farmer. Does that excuse you the need to look after the poor? So what happens in Judaism is that they take the commands of Torah and they fill them out. They give extra detail. Actually, the point isn't your field and the corner. The point is the need of the poor in your community and how you look after them. So when you start to write this down, are you adding to Torah? Yes. Are you adding to Torah to blaspheme? No. You're coming up with a body of tradition, the aim of which is to help you keep Torah in a better way. So you can look at some of these extra texts in Judaism in a completely different way to how you'd look at the Gospel of Thomas or some of the Gnostic Gospels. Partly because of motivation, partly because there's a need there that doesn't exist for certain other genres of writing. Um, and partly it's due to the levels of sacredness that are ascribed to these traditions. So nobody would say that the Mishnah or the Talmud is of equal authority to the Torah or the Prophets.